Root canals on mandibular second molars. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Restricted opening and calcified canals all around super difficult to manage. Let me show you how I was able to manage both of these problems in this week's video. Hey Mass from All Things Dentistry and I'm passionate about sharing those unwritten tips and hints in dentistry. And you know what, I'm super excited to invite you to join me with my webinar where I'm going to tackle a four canal molar and walk you through all the simplified steps and techniques that I've been taught from all my mentors and experts over the past 20 years of my career. So take a look in the description box below for that link to join me in my upcoming webinar. So after I give a block, especially for symptomatic teeth like Emmanuel's, I'm always going to give a PDL injection with an ultra short, we use the Oligma Jet using an ultra short needle, 30 gauge needle with just lidocaine. And actually, Dr. Steve, Dr. Steve must be about 75 years old, and he taught me this trick and I use it routinely now. It just makes such a difference for uh, patient comfort and my own confidence that we've got proper anesthesia on board, or with 99%. So I'm gonna place my rubber dam, then we're gonna place our secondary seal with opal dam, just to make sure we don't get any leakage of saliva, but also irrigant into the oral canal, oral cavity. I'm gonna light cure it, and then I'm actually gonna floss that mesial contact because you can see some saliva coming out through there. And then we're gonna start our access with a number four round long surgical burr, and we have a, quite an open pulp chamber, so I'm not too concerned about uh, missing the pulp in this case. And I'm gonna drop right in, but she, darn it, feels symptoms. So we're gonna use that same ligma jet to give her an intrapulpal real quick, and then we're going to finish my access with an endo Z burr. This beautiful burr, if you haven't used it, just rides along the pulp chamber and creates your access for you. Right away, what I normally do is I'm gonna try to see, kind of see what I get with my wave one gold. And what do I mean by see what I get? Well, let's see what orifices are open. And I'm telling you, we've got nothing other than the distal. So I'm going to tackle something that I know I can get into and we're going to get the distal. And as a surprise, I get the entire pulp that comes out of the distal as well. So at some point I was able to get my 10 file to length in my mesobuccal canal. And now I'm, I'm cut to the chase and we're able to get to the length with my wave and gold primary. But that mesial lingual canal, that was just more than frustrating. And you can see in restricted opening cases, the patient can't open, and of course it's a second molar. Using your hands and trying to get hand, bent hand files, you can't see what's going on. So one of the easiest way to do that, to get that file back there, there you can see there's not much, I, I can't find, there's no opening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my cotton forceps with my file to get my file into place and I'm able to get a little snag with my eight file. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna do what's called a 6 8, 10 progression. This is super helpful. My buddy Les taught me it. So I'm gonna, and I'm, I'm not even into anywhere near the Esker. I'm just trying to get to like the coronal two thirds of this canal. So I'm gonna cycle through a 6 8, 10 series and I'm just doing nice light filing. So it's up and down. I'm not forcing the file apically. And each larger file, so I'm gonna go back through a six do a little bit of filing. I'm trying to watch wind it down. It's not going anywhere. Do an eight. And each file is actually making a little more space because all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create more coronal two thirds shape so I can get my wave one gold down to shape the coronal two thirds and then attack the apical third or that, you know, where that S curve is. So finally, I'm starting to get some more space I'm trying to get that, you know, I can get that file a little bit further apically. I'm going to put my apex locator on there, see if I'm anywhere near. At some point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a decision to say, okay, I'm going to take my wave and gold primary to just coronal to that S curve, get a little more shape in this canal so I can get hand files to the apex and get my working light. So don't forget to subscribe to my upcoming webinar where you'll see how I tackle with simplified gear a maxillary four canal molar. So this is where not getting frustrated and knowing what the next step should be comes in handy and really what I've been taught is to shape the coronal two thirds. So I can't get the length yet, but that's okay. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my wave one gold primary and open up the coronal two thirds. So I'm just gonna go to the 16 millimeters, which is the cutting flutes. I'm gonna stop at the cutting flutes on that wave and gold primary. That gives me more shape to be able to get 
my file apically. And that's really the key to dealing with constricted canals. Get a little more coronal shape, and then you're able to take your hand files and magically, like this happens almost every time, if there's not a kink in the end, you're able to get to working length after that. So I've got my working length now, and because I know it's a really constricted canal and I know it's an S-curve, I'm not actually gonna use the primary. I'm gonna take the Wave & Gold Small. I rarely use these files. I think this is the only one we have. And I'm gonna take that to my working length because I know that I don't wanna ledge that S-curve. So this beautiful file just goes right, navigates right around that S-curve. I'm gonna irrigate the heck out of this canal. And I know that the mesials are Vertucci, Vertucci type two. So they, meaning that they, they join at the apex. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna make sure that I have recapitulation quite a few times. And it's, un, it blows my mind. When I pull this file out, you gotta see the shape of it. It's crazy. So after seeing this wicked 90 degree bend on this file, I'm gonna make a decision to stop uh, my apical finish with a wave and go primary. I open up 90% of my cases to a medium, but the medium is just too big to make, make it around that S curve. I know that the two mesials join, so I've already created my apical shape and my mesial lingual. I'm gonna reconfirm my patency, and then I pull out the file, and again, I'm just amazed by the shape of this tooth. You can see the serpentine roller coaster that that canal is. So I'm about to re, just, I wanna touch up the mesial lingual just to make sure we've got nice shape, and I bend it in my hand, and the file breaks. So that tells me that we're good to go. So it didn't break in the canal, it broke in my hand because I've been putting a lot of stress on it. So I'm like, okay, that's it. Time to do our final irrigation. And this is our final shape before we go ahead and obturate, dry and obturate. So like I said, those two canals join in the Vertucci type two. And you can see that we've got sealer. When we place our sealer, our BC sealer, we're gonna have sealer come up the adjacent canal and there it is we'll place some of the distal and the beauty of using bc sealer is that i can take a working length radiograph versus using gutta core so i place my gutta percha points and then we take a radiograph i'm happy with the the radiograph i'm extremely happy with it we're able to tackle that s curve and of course today is the day that my touch and heat dies so I actually have to use an old tip and use a flame. I couldn't believe it. I don't have a backup at this office, but we're good to go. We troubleshooted that and she's getting tired by the end of this case. So we can't really get her to open. So those are my two mesials that join in Vertucci type two. And then we have our distal canal. And then we place our cotton pellet in our cabot. And one of the tips that Ruth taught me was to place it in a cone and then simply to clean off the cabot, we use a wet uh, cotton tip applicator and there's our final result. I love it. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Please place your comments below, share a like, and don't forget to subscribe for my webinar and we'll see you next time.